Let me show you how to solve orbit problems. Okay. Uh, concept zero for an orbit problem is that you've got this satellite, right? And MS there means mass of the satellite. You've got the satellite, and the satellite is moving either with some velocity or some period around a central body. So that's what MC is, is the central body. So in the case of a satellite orbiting the Earth, the Earth's mass is, of course, MC, the central body, right? And then MS would be whatever the mass of that satellite is. And then T would be how long it takes the satellite to go around, and V would be how fast it's going, okay? Um, and the concept here is that when you solve these problems, you just set, this is centripetal force right here, you set the centripetal force equal to the force of gravity. So this is gravity, right? Right, this is the centripetal force, right? So that makes sense, right? The force causing the moon to go around the earth is gravity. The force that makes the earth go around the sun is just the force of gravity, right? So we set centripetal force equal to um, gravitational force, right? Now, notice that, and I'll just show you this, the satellite mass always cancels. And that's always true if you ever have a small satellite and a very large central body, right? It's approximately true for the Earth and the Moon and pretty good for the, the, the um, even better for the Earth and the Sun because the Earth is vanishingly small compared to the Sun. Um, but if you ever have two objects that are the same mass, be careful, you gotta do something else, okay? So, so what I'm gonna show you is for orbits where essentially this satellite goes around the center of whatever this object is, okay? And that's true for any satellite, like the space station or a space shuttle or, or something like that, right? And it's just about true for the moon. Uh, we'll assume it's true, okay? So here's our first example is what is the velocity of orbit 250 miles above the Earth, right? Um, and since uh, we've got velocity here, right, there are two different centripetal forces, right? There's one with period and there's one with velocity, okay? Since we're dealing with velocity for this one, we're going to use the velocity one, right? Um, and so ultimately, I'm going to go mass of the satellite, V squared over R, that's the centripetal force I need, is going to equal G, mass of the central body, mass of the satellite, over R squared, right? Now, the question is, of course, the, the central body is going to be the Earth, so I'm going to use this mass. But the question is, what's the radius of orbit? And this is the trickiest thing of all, right? If it's 250 miles above the Earth, then what we do is we, we say that the radius is Earth's radius plus 250 miles. That's what it means to be above the Earth, right? So 6.38 times 10 to the sixth meters plus 250 miles, that's the conversion meters per mile, right? So if you run four laps on the track, you're nine meters short actually of a mile, right? Um, and then this is what it is, right? Okay. It's that many meters, 6.782250 meters, right? Okay. Okay, let me type that in my calculator. 6782250. All right. Okay, so um, what I do with these things, since it's very hard to do algebra with giant numbers like that, I do the algebra in paper and just use these symbols, right? So I can cancel that. I can also multiply it both sides by R. Right, and now I've got V squared equals this. So V is equal to the square root of G times M over R, right? So now it's time to type numbers in, right? So velocity is the square root of 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11th, right? And that's Newton meters squared over kilograms squared, right? Okay, and then uh, let's see, the mass is 5.97 times 10 to the uh, 24th kilograms, right? And then uh, R is, uh, let's see, what is this? This is going to be, uh, oh, it's this number here, 6782250, right? Meters, yeah? Okay, so uh, then when we do that with our calculator, right? Uh, and then it's like I'm looking at the units here, right? A kilogram and a kilogram and a meter and a meter, right? Is a newton meter over kilogram the square root of that equal to velocity? I'll bet it is, right? Okay, let me show you how to type this into your calculator. 
Now we're going to, the blue pen here is going to go the way of the bison. So uh, uh, I'm going to go into the Wabbit EMU here. Okay. And then what you do is you go uh, second square root. Is it on? Hello? Is it? Oh, there it is. Okay. So let's go second square root of 6.67 e minus 11, right, uh, times 5.97 e24, right, okay, uh, divided by, what was it, 6, there's that number, 6782250, right, right parenthesis. Boom, and it's 7662.37, right? Okay, so that's our answer. And sadly, all our nice blue pen is, 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 is gone, right? Okay, but 7662 uh, meters per second is, is our answer, right? And of course, this is fabulously fast. 250 miles above Earth is how high the uh, International Space Station is, roughly. It varies, you know, they'll, they'll boost it up and its orbit will decay because it's, it's not entirely above the atmosphere, so it tends to slow down and come closer to Earth. Um, but that's amazingly fast. If I take that and figure it out in miles per hour, it's about 17,000 miles per hour. So that's amazingly fast, okay? But uh, there you have it. All right, so that's our first example. I'm going to do another example with geostationary orbit, uh, but I'll put that on another video here.